H2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys, how we are different from our competitors. 100% job oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recorded sessions of live classes. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kinfosys.com. And it is base class for other other class. Then it is actually we have different levels. That we call it as multi-level inheritance. And here, this class, if you take, it is having how many base classes? It is having three base classes. So that is the reason why this is called as multiple inheritance. Okay. Let's come here. So how many base classes this is having? Class B. And even class C is having one base class. So can you write this pictorially? Can you write this like this? So can you write like this? A here and here it is like this B. And you can write here A here and you can write this as C. And you can write here A and you can write this as D here. Can you write like this? The same thing, see here for the third example, can you write like this? Yes, but do you think can you write like this for this example? For this example, you cannot write like this because because these three are combinedly forming uh, combinedly forming multiple inheritance. But here, this for this class B A is base class for class C A is base class for class D A is base class. So you can write here like this, but but you cannot write this here. So this is again an example for single inheritance. This is not uh, multiple inheritance. Okay. So, what are the major three types of inheritance we have? We have single inheritance, we have multiple inheritance, we have multi-level inheritance. We have something called hierarchical inheritance, but that is even sometimes some authors call this as hierarchical inheritance. But I believe, I mean, I read in um, C sharp uh, books some of the examples like they tell this as single inheritance. But you can think as this hierarchical inheritance or single inheritance that should be fine. But for now, uh, the only Three things which you need to focus on is a uh, single inheritance, multiple inheritance and multi-level inheritance. Okay. Now let's go back to the topic. So C sharp, C sharp will not support multiple inheritances for classes. So a single class cannot have more than one base class. I repeat in C sharp, a single class cannot have more than one base class. C sharp will not support multiple inheritance for classes. Whereas it will support for interfaces, I am going to discuss that in a short while. Okay. So now let me open notepad. We discussed on single inheritance. We discussed on multi level inheritance, multiple inheritance. And we discussed on multi level. So I will just quickly summarize. A single inheritance is where you have single base class and single derived class. Multiple inheritance is where you have single derived class, I mean, but you have multiple base classes. Multi level inheritance is where you have a series of linkage between base class and derived class, where a specific class is, is a derived class and also the same class is, is a base class. That type of example is called as multi level inheritance. So, is it clear these three types of inheritances? All of you okay so can one of you unmute yourself and, and explain me this three, ty three types of inheritances just just one liner for each I repeat C sharp will not support multiple inheritance for classes I'm writing here C sharp will not support uh, will not support multiple inheritance for classes and but it will support for support for interfaces 
and we're going to see what is interfaces uh, in some time. So, so anyone wants to tell a single line about each inheritance we have? So, what are the types of inheritance we have, and and one line about that? So, can unmute yourself and tell me. Other than other than Padmini and Seema, anyone wants to take this up? Just tell me what are the three types of inheritance and uh, what is uh, short description one line about that. Okay, Ravi, go ahead. Yeah, it's uh, three types: uh, single, okay, single type, multi multi level, and uh, perfect multi. Okay, so the is the one. Uh, Parent class and uh, one base class, it's one child class. Perfect. And uh, the multiple is like uh, one base, uh, one child class, but uh, multiple uh, parent classes. Perfect. And uh, multi level is um, it's like series of uh, the classes, the parent and child classes. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you very much, Ravi. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Uh, so that is a perfect uh, description which we got from uh, Ravi, like uh, uh, three types of uh, inheritances we have, uh, single, multiple, and multi-level. So now I'm, ask, I'm getting some questions saying like, uh, can you explain multi-level again? So, okay, so multi-level, if you see here, I got a question from, uh, so multi-level is something like where we have uh, this class like this. So let me open here Windows our MS Paint. So here I have three classes like this. Okay, so I'll I'll show the example for you right away in the straight in the program. I'll show that example. So now I have here print Hindi high and print high I have here. So now what I will do here is imagine I have another class called class combine high or whatever. So where now I have this, this class is getting in, used here. So what I can do here is I write this print high here. So now uh, inside this, so I can use this class print high is, is child class for this one. And this class combine high is child class for this print high. So, so here, this is an example of multi-level inheritance. Multi-level inheritance. Multi-level inheritance. So here, if you see in MS Paint, so this one here will be like this. And here it is. Okay, and here it is. Okay, so this is an example of, is it clear now all of you, what is multi-level inheritance? So here this print high is a base, is a derived class for this one, is a derived cl class for this one, and again this is forming base class for this one. That is called, so you are seeing in levels, so multi-level. Okay, so here, um, okay, one more thing which you need to note down here is, um, this is called parent class, this is child class, and again this print high is a parent class for this one. And this one is a grandchild of this one. Okay, anyway, uh, the terminology is okay, but yeah. Okay, so that is about different types of inheritances we have. And uh, that is how, that is what we call as method overloading. Now, let's try to understand what is method overriding. What is method overriding? Okay, now. Okay. So, uh, I don't know what what did you define? Uh, how did you define the multi-level? Is it like different base class for one child class? Uh, how, how will we define it? Different base class? Yeah, for okay. So uh, you can define the way uh, Ravi has said, like you can define it saying like if you have, uh, uh, if you have linkage between, just a second. Okay. So if you have linkage between uh, base class or series of link, uh, links between uh, the classes uh, uh, with parent-child relation, we call it as multi-level, multi-level. So if you see here in 
here we see series of connections between the classes with the parent child relationship so here this is parent class and this is child class and again this parent class and again this child class so so if someone asks you to explain this maybe you can you can ask them to give some paper and pen and you can you can show this so this is an example of multi level inheritance okay parent child relationship yeah yeah a series of parent child relationship where a same class acts like parent as well as child okay thanks okay okay so now let's let's try to understand what is method overriding okay now sometimes what happens you have um, for example um let's try to understand uh okay let me take one very proper example to explain what is method overriding so let me remove this code everything that we have here let me remove this as well okay so i have a, i have a uh, three companies take for example so windows are notepad just for example let's take that i have a company called infosys i have cognizant i have accenture just say uh, these are big mnc's so let's take this example of um giving pf so what do you think we have uh, we normally have the components for salary anyone wants to uh, give some components in the salary slip take in india for example in india or any other country what do you think uh, normally the components we have uh, components what are the different components we have in in the salary slip in the pay slip we have uh, we'll have different components so what do you think we will have uh, in in the pay slip okay we have a basic we have basic salary basic and then what else amount will be there obviously basic and bonus do you think you heard of something called hra yeah it's called house rent allowance so we normally have basic salary house rent allowance and then and then we'll have bonus or special allowance yeah perfect example so conveyance and anything else um you think of i need five values basic hra yeah 401k okay the last one anything else yeah insurance is also good example yeah okay so so now let's assume that uh, we are right, we are going to write uh, an example uh, a class for this calculating so basic will be uh, will be normally take for example um, uh, take for example $1000 okay and and your hra will be around uh, take for example um, 50% of basic and conveyance is take for example 10% of basic and for not k let's take an example of 20% of basic okay so now can we create a class for this uh, can we create a class for the salary and try to implement this uh, logic so try to have uh, try to have three methods hra conveyance and 401k and for which we will pass the basic okay so i'm going to create a class salary so let's try to understand this so i'm going to create a class salary and inside that i have a method called public public uh, uh, float well, let me have integer so i don't need uh, decimal values public int get hra and i'm going to pass in basic so here it's taking basic and what is the percentage we decided for hra so in the logic we discussed uh, hra as 50% of basic so what do i need to write here if i want to, if i want to get 50% of basic i can write here return 0.5 star basic do you think this is correct whatever i wrote here yeah it is showing me an error saying like uh, we cannot convert double to integer so what you can write here is you can declare as float
because anyway obviously we have decimal values so so let's try to understand this okay so so i'm using i'm using float here so and i'm passing basic salary and do you think this is correct 0 0.05 into basic is the 50 percent how many of you think this is correct as per the logic as per the functionality which we needed hello okay now now uh, instead of this 0 0.5 any other logic you suggest yeah this amount will pass it later so uh, i do, see i want to calculate 50 percent of basic so any other formula any other way we can write it instead of 0 0.5 into basic okay uh, okay that's fine uh, now now we'll try to understand uh, what is the second one we have so the second one we have is conveyance which is 10 percent of basic so now let's try to write it here one more method so public float yeah yeah we can write even basic by two that's a good one so public float and i can write here what is the other one um, the other one is conveyance so get float basic okay and then i write return what is the percentage i have 20 percent so 0 0.2 f star basic okay and what is the last one we have what is the last one we have public float get 401k and here i'll write here float basic so let's assume that the 401k is written 0 0.1 floor star basic now if i want to get if i want to add some salary here for example int int my salary okay and here i can put here int basic is equal to $1000 thousand dollars so now what i can do here i can actually put my salary is equal to, i need to create an object if i want to uh yeah it is float here perfect right now now if i want to call these methods what i need to do i need to create an object for the salary so i'll create an object for the salary here salary yes is equal to new salary And here I'll put my salary is equal to basic plus yes dot get HRA. Basic plus yes dot get conveyance basic plus yes dot get 401k basic. Are you guys getting it? How I'm trying to calculate total salary? I'm putting basic plus. I'm adding these three components. So is it clear now, all of you? Hey, uh, when you run this one, uh, are you going to get all the salary information? Correct. <laughs> I, I'm going to get the sum of sum of these four values. I, I have a, one question, like there. Yeah. For example, if I need for three years. And every year my salary is going up by 0.3 percent. Okay. So how to calculate that? And like every year, it's a three percent increment of the salary. Okay. So in that case, you can write an additional method saying like increment your salary by three percent. So for example, uh, okay. So let me write a method here. okay so you can pass your uh, percentage of increment here and you can write here uh, return you can write even another variable called in percentage and and you can get here current salary star 
you can write here percentage by uh, 100 plus current salary so you can actually write additional method for getting this increment salary what exactly is your question uh, uh, the exact question is like uh, for example I'm getting an increment for example if it is a thousand dollars okay and a three percent increment uh, it's another thirty dollars yeah it's a thousand thirty so it is for three years the next year I'll get an increment three percent of thousand thirty it's approximately thirty three dollars so I want to calculate for three years like that and uh, display the three year salary information along with the uh, all uh, like uh, d d uh, along with this uh, 401k and, okay uh, HR. okay so i got your question so every year you're getting a uh, 30 percent hike right yeah th three percent hike yeah 30 i would join that company if it is 30 percent <laughs> <laughs> good one okay so you want to write a way to get uh, your salary for three years and every year you're getting three percent hike right yeah okay so i'll write the method i'm not going to explain now you try to understand that okay now uh -huh. so here this is your salary for one year or for one month right so let me comment this out see now uh, i'm passing this basic as thousand and i'm getting total salary for so if i run this so let me run this And I'm not seeing any output because I'm not printing it here. So let me write it here, uh, console.write line. And I'm going to write here my salary. Okay, so this we are calculating for the current month. So if I run this, I can see here I'm getting 1800. So because, uh, because I have initially 1000, so total 1000 plus 5%, I mean 50%, 20%, and 10%, uh, so total 80%. So total I'm getting here, I'm getting here the output as 1800. So monthly he's getting $1,800. Now, uh, to answer the question which I got saying like, he want to see the total uh, salary for uh, incremented by 3%. So what we can do here is, we can write here public float increment value, uh, increment, increment percent. And I can write here uh, float salary. And I, I'm going to put here return 0 0.03 star salary plus salary. OK, so now I have written a method here. So what this method will do is, so why it is, OK, so let me put here, OK. sorry so let me put it here okay okay now we got it so i am just writing here a uh, three percent hike and i'm adding that to the current salary so here when you pass this current salary here i'm going to get uh, get the hike of uh, hike hike salary so here what i'll do here is this is my current uh, my salary and next year if you want to see for example um, console dot right line after one year hike what you can do here is you can you can call that method so he can he can call s dot uh, s dot increment percent and he can put here my salary anyway uh, if you want to have it as a sequence like proper procedure we need uh, we cannot uh, do it see now after one year if i want to tell you what is your hike you are actually giving three percent hike so if if i run this I can see here your hike after one year is 1854. So let me put it in properly. So just a second. So I'll I'll actually put it after this. Okay. So now let me run this. So initially your current salary is 1800. After one year your hike is uh, 1854. Now if you want if you want to see what is your salary after two years or or whatever what you can do here is you can actually store this uh, in into this uh, once you print this my salary you can actually my salary equal to yes dot increment of my salary okay so now I copy this <coughs>
Okay, let me run this. See now, your current salary is okay. I need to correct it here just a second. Since I am storing it a variable, I don't need to write it again. So I can I can put that value. I'll explain this. Don't worry. For all of you, I'll explain this again. So let me run this. See now, this is this is what you exactly needed. So your current salary is 1800. After one year, with the hike of 3%, your salary will be 1854. In two years, with the, with the hike of 3% on the on that salary of one year, you'll get 1909. So so is this what something you're looking similar to this? Yeah, something like this. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So you can write a method, uh, but still you can do automation or you can do different ways for that. But uh, this is how we write some logic. So I have written a, a method which will return, which will calculate you 3% hike. And I'm calling that after one year, I'm calling this method. After two years, I'm calling the same method. After three years, I'm calling the same method again. So after three years, with the current salary of 1800, he will get $1966. Okay. So how many of you, how many of you understood this? Let me, yeah. How many of you understood this? Okay. Okay. So there is only what I'm doing here is I wrote three methods. One is get HRA, get conveyance and get 4.1k. And since to answer the question, I have added one more method called increment by percentage of 3%, 3% of the salary. What I'm doing is I'm calculating 3%. I'm adding it to the salary. <coughs> okay. So now what I'm doing here, I'm calculating my salary as basic plus. I created an object of this class. Salary is, I created an object. And here, <coughs> okay. <coughs> so I created an object of this class salary and I'm calling these three methods. So this is how we call the methods of a class. So we'll create an object and then we'll call the methods like s dot <coughs> s dot method name plus s dot conveyance and s dot get four not one k and then we are trying we are adding this basic with all the values which this method is returning. So this is how we calculate the salary total salary. And now since uh, I got a question saying to increment the salary by three percent, I have written I have I have written a method for increment the percentage. And after one year, I'm assigning this incremented salary to my salary and I'm printing it here. And again, my current salary is after one year salary here. And I'm again printing after two years and after three years. Okay. So anyway, so I thought of explaining um, method overriding now. That's okay. We are going to discuss that uh, later. So just to summarize quickly, today we learned about uh, method overloading the method with um, same method name and different parameters that we call it as method overloading and then we also saw about uh, different types of inheritance we have uh, we saw um, single inheritance we saw multiple inheritance and we also saw multi-level inheritance and in multiple inheritance uh, we have uh, more than one base class and single derived class which is not supported by c sharp classes uh, multiple inheritance is supported using c sharp interfaces interfaces Okay, and then we also quickly saw uh, what is method overloading and also we saw about XML comments. So we learned that using XML comments, you can provide the description for your methods and uh, you can even add like th the purpose of the method and you can also add description for your parameters. Okay, and uh, okay. So in the next class, we'll discuss about abstract class and serial class. We also discuss about um, method overriding. Okay. So any questions here? Okay. So how about others? Any questions you have or is it a bit faster today? <clears throat> um, just for the code that you did, 
um how it is incre- incrementing with the second year like first year i understood like uh, it is okay. adding up but how how it is adding up the the amount that it has increased and uh, again it's um, okay the- okay that's a, okay that's a good question see now let me put a break point to explain that i'll put a break point here and i'll 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 put a break point here and then i'll run this run this so if i run this <clears throat> breakpoints are used in c sharp for debugging to understand how the flow is happening so all you need to do is put a breakpoint and press f11 or f10 so now i'm i'm so this is getting calculated with my salary and you can see that uh, my current salary uh, is 18000 $1800 it calculated basic and conveyance and it added uh, all the details so it is 1800 as of now so once it printed i'm i'm calling this increment method and after calling this i'm again storing it in my salary so now when i move the mouse here as of now the value is 1854 after the first year so i'm printing here after one year hike my salary is 1854 i'm printing here what i'm doing here again i'm calling the same method which which with the value which i have currently currently i have 1854 i'm passing this 1854 for this method so when i pass this 1854 now it will return me the hike again so it is 1909 now i am passing 1909 for this method here so it is returning me 1966 so i am calling the same method again and again with the with the incremented value so it is returning me the next year's next year's salary increment is it is it making sense yes okay okay So how about others? Is it clear? This one. I'm calling the same method multiple times. Uh, I'm storing. The point you should note here is I'm storing inside the same value. My my salary. I'm storing the incremented salary, and I'm again passing the same value. Again, I'm storing it into same variable. If it would have been different, it it wouldn't have been. Was the value would would have been different? No, no. Even you can use different variables, but I thought of reusing the same variable. So so I'm using the same variable here. Yeah, but if I would have used different variables, it would not be confusion for you. I mean, it would be very clear. But using same variable, I think you are getting confused here. But uh, uh, yeah, yeah, go ahead, Ravi. You can unmute yourself. Uh, if I use the different variables, then I have to change uh, the right line with the different variables every time, right? Right, right, right. But this is the best way to do it. Use the same variable. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, any other questions? Okay. So, I uh, I strongly request all of you to go through the videos, all the videos. If you got the links for all the videos, uh, I think we will be giving recordings from the previous class and the initial six classes also we recorded. I'll talk to his ticket team to share with all of you. Um, Okay, so whatever we we discuss so far, please be thorough in that. So that uh, also, if you are answering the questions, I feel confident saying like uh, uh, you are getting it really well. Okay, so hey. H two K emphasis provides world class online IT training, staffing. and software testing solutions to customers worldwide h2k emphasis how we are different from our competitors 100% job oriented training hands on project work cloud test lab resume preparation and review mock interviews robust syllabus one time fee and lifetime access to classes access to recorded sessions of live classes h2k emphasis has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide for a free demo class Visit us at h2kinfosys.com.